Uh, we'd like you to take a group photo. Some of us are not wearing shirts tonight. No, you are wearing your shirts tonight. Oh, you are. Uh, and so at the end of the panel presentation, if you would gather against the back wall, we will have a firing squad ready to shoot you. Uh, oh, no, a photographer ready to take a picture. Uh, so uh, if you'll please do that at the end of the panel presentation, that would be great. Uh, because we wanted to get a, a, a photo of this historic assemblage. And it really is a lot of job. I was also just reminded that we do have a show special on the Nemo motherboards, and the special is that if you order a motherboard here, you get free shipping uh, uh, to your location. So uh, see Matthew, and uh, at uh, the end of the presentation, or hey, especially in your regard, that would be that would be very cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, see him tomorrow, tackle him wherever you can. Uh, and uh, you can arrange for that. Also, and I wanted to put in a plug for our vendors and our exhibitors because uh, they've you know, spent some time, effort, energy, and money getting here. Uh, so, and I was happy to see that you were all discussing and patronizing and so many exchanging hands and things like that. That's great. Uh, that motivates them to come back, uh, which is uh, what we want them to do as well. So, uh, thank you very much for your help in that regard. And I think I'll turn it over to Mr. Borsard. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, my name is Raya. Everybody knows most of the people are up here. Um, just uh, for the people on the panel, we have a couple of microphones we're going to have to share. Um, just yeah, you know, unmute or whatever. So, um, I think the, the purpose of this uh, opportunity was to bring uh, Matthew, Trevor, Steve, uh, as well as some other folks uh, from the community here, Fred and Alan, um, to <laughs> to, to uh, discuss, like we do every year, sort of in, a, in this kind of format, about the Amiga computer. So, uh, I have a machine in front of me, I'm just kind of looking to see what's going on with uh, the streaming side. We have a few people watching. Um, we might actually outnumber them in the room, but it's close. Um, so we just had a, a great presentation by LD on the where the power architecture is going. And, and during that conversation, uh, there was a lot of discussion about what other types of processors there are. Um, it's obviously very important to the platform for whole number of reasons, but uh, what I was going to suggest um, that, that we start with is a brief introduction, say your name and, and sort of who you are. Um, I'm interested to what Trevor says, if he can come up something clever. Um, that's who he is. Anyway. Um, and then what I want to do is sort of think about and, and discuss um, what it might look like two years from now. Um, at, at the, that is the 30th anniversary of the Amiga, um, what the hardware, uh, the hardware aspects of the system might look like uh, two years from now, sort of as a discussion. So, um, Matthew or Eldie, well, you just you just had an introduction, Eldie, so we don't need to introduce you. So, Matthew, do you want to grab the, the mic and just uh, quickly introduce yourself? Hello? Yes. <laughs> As you know, I'm Matty Lehman, I'm from Amiga Kids and uh, also involved in Aeon. Um, so I'm involved on the retail side and uh, in, the, in the, the detail regarding the new Cyrus system and uh, future developments from Aeon. I'm Trevor Dickinson, um, I'm a megaholic, as you all know. Hello, Trevor. Oh, we already That's not what you said last night. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for the noise to join in. I'm a found, the founder of Aeon Technology. Uh, I'm a business angel in New Zealand. Uh, I have lots of other business interests. But what gives me great pleasure and, and really is my 
absolute hobby. I'm obsessed with it. Is the Amiga computer. <laughs> yes, hi, I'm Stephen Soli. I'm currently the um, cat herder for Amiga OS and um, having a fun time. It's fun, it's fun. Um, trying, to, trying to make some leaps and bounds with the OS. And it's a tricky thing, but I enjoy doing it. I'm Alan Spoodbank, and uh, I'm actually an oceanographer, not a computer scientist or anything like that. <coughs> but because an oceanography is a huge field, there's always big computers and lots of electronics and all that, so you end up becoming computer scientists anyway. Uh, and that's basically how I got into computing and using all that. So. Hi, uh, I'm Fred Wright, uh, long time hard hardware and software uh, engineer, been a uh, new user since 86 when I got my 1000, and I've attended all the Andy West since 1998, and um, I guess that's about it. So the, the, the question that I had put, I don't think the two little guys look. The question that I put out there uh, was sort of, get people thinking about the future. Uh, we're two years out from the 30th anniversary, and um, we just had a presentation about CPUs. We had an announcement early this morning about a new motherboard. So let's, uh, I, I just wanted to, to throw it out to the, the panel to say, um, where do you see Amiga hardware? So, you know, specifically, um, here we're talking a lot about Amiga OS 4 power to see, but in general, uh, in, in the next two years, is there anything interesting? Um, are there any opportunities that that the community should be looking at? Just kind of, does anyone have any thoughts on that particular topic? Can I? Yeah, please, absolutely. Um, I think there's a change coming. Uh, the, the problem we have is because of the size of the, the community. Uh, the hardware has been necessarily expensive because of NRE charges. It can't be the way with it, whether it was PowerPC or Intel or any other uh, processor out there. But I, from what I know of our plans, uh, I'm talking about plans for Cyrus and other plans we have uh, committed to, um, I don't think hardware is going to be the issue in the future, the next couple of years. There's not going to be a scarcity of hardware unless people don't buy it. Uh, no, seriously, unless people don't buy it, there's not going to be a scarcity of hardware. The, the challenge for us now is to uh, content on the software. And that's where our focus has got to be. And so it, it really does put the pressure on Steve and his team to come up with the, the software tools and the uh, multi core as part of that <coughs> to bring the bigger OS into a, an operating system which is part of the, this century. Uh, we all love using it. It's a fantastic operating system. Uh, but it needs to, um, it, we need to have content. And that, that to me is the, the, the real aim for the next couple of years. Because knowing what I know on the, from just from our plans, and knowing what I know of some plans from some other companies, other companies, uh, it's, it's really software and content that is, is the, is what we need to look on for the future. So, from what you're saying, the, um, the hardware that and the trajectory that we're currently on is enough to, I mean, obviously we'll be there in two years, but uh, you feel that we're there. Like, we have that problem under control this, in, this, in this time frame from a two-year horizon. From what we've announced today and what are the plans we have in place, yes. So, when I, when I said problem, I meant uh, specifically around availability of systems and that those systems are, are functional and that you can get expansion cards and use other um, bits of hardware that are available from the community, uh, I should say the computer world in, uh, overall. Um, but you, you brought up the, the other part of hardware, which is software, right? And so um, what specific things do you think that um, people in the community, I mean users can do, to help encourage the uh, creation of that, that content. And anyone, other than Trevor, want to jump in? Jump in. Yeah. 
Marshall Lake here and stuff. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I, I think I agree with Trevor that, that soft co content software, and that's really the issue at this point. We've got that x mouse chip hiding in there, and much things going on in the software. It's really cool. It gives me a little bit of that old Amiga feeling from 85 when I first saw my first you know, 1000. I said, wow, it's something else. Um, but I'm moderately involved with a new project by Jerry Ellsworth, which most people here have heard of or know of. She's a C64 and a joystick person, um, which is a new augmented reality vision system that um, I'm not going to go into great detail on because I could spend hours. But it's um, an amazing thing that you should hop on your Kickstarter and look up Cast AR, C A S T A R, and at least buy her a cup of coffee because she really needs caffeine right now. <laughs> but uh, um, it, this is so hardware goggles, all this sort of thing, that would, if the proper software was in the, I mean, one would work. It really literally needs a, a USB port and an HDMI port um, to work. And it's one of the most, you have to see it to believe it, so you, should, you really should look it up. Um, that, uh, it, uh, the, but the issue there is it needs a proper game engine. And because game engines are not used just for games, they're used for scientific visualization, for education, for all kinds of things. And, and I don't really see that happening in the one realm. I see a lot of things going on that are good things, but I don't see pushing into these other realms that could be really important. Um, so, so, so you brought up the point that what enables the creation of the content are the foundational technologies. And, and I think uh, Unity comes to mind as one of those pieces of software that is incredibly prevalent in the mainstream computing world um, and it seems like it's really out of reach for the Amiga at the moment because it is a closed source tool. I mean, well, but, uh, just to carry on, they are, Jerry at least, they're talking about um, open source, you know, looking at other game engines and all of their code in fact is going to be open. They're, they're going to keep the hardware proprietary at least at this point. So, you know, making that happen certainly could be done as long as you can get the right engine and fair enough. But, uh, but, but that's one, that's one thing, where the Unity engine specifically opens up a huge amount of code. Oh, sure. If that could be gotten on there, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, Matthew, you want to yeah. jump in? What, one of the biggest problems we've got is that we need to expand the user base. And before you start porting engines, that all these things cost incredible amounts oh, yeah. of money. Um, and we need, we need more users in the user base. Um, that means that the existing hardcore uh, user base needs to re relinquish their 10-year-old SEs and XEs, sell them on, put them into the second-hand market, and, um, and actually, and actually make, make purchase of these new systems that are coming through. Uh, the Aeon project's very high risk. Um, they, they need to be... Uh, our, our customer base needs to make the commitment and uh, make the purchase. And once there, once there's other machines into the second-hand market at reduced prices, the the market will grow. The, the the amount of users will grow. And of course, you need you need more blood in the in the market, more users in the market, to to make these um, software projects more commercial. And um, it's self-perpetuating. Once you've got better software, you'll have better hardware. And uh, um, everything goes around in a cyclical way. And that, that's the only way to, uh, to solve these issues. So uh, it's, got, it's got to be customers, it's got to be more users before we even get, get to that point. So you mentioned something interesting around um, having people who have existing systems move them into a second-hand market. Um, and, and I think one of the things that addresses price um, because uh, the value of an older second-hand system, hopefully, uh, will be higher than the new system so that I can sell mine and get a new one. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so um, you, you're saying as a way to sort of stimulate the user population to get machines into the pipeline that are more affordable. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mika users traditionally always keep their machines for very, very long periods of time. You imagine the, uh, the average PC user will keep their PC, PC for, what, two, three years, something like that. Um, I, I'm regularly talking to my customers, and s some of them have got 10-year-old Amiga 1 machines and, you know, classic machines from 
30 year, uh, 25 years ago. So, um, it, it, if, if um, there's new hardware coming into the market like Cyrus, uh, we have to look at our existing base of customers first to see who wants to upgrade. You know, it's a lot of a lot of users will will say, "Well, I'll wait for the next best thing." But uh, there's always there's always something better coming around the corner. You've you've, you've got to you've got to support the hardware that is coming out in the future, and um, that's why Aeon's made a commitment. It's, and we we're hoping that. Um, the Amiga community will appreciate that commitment and buy the new machines. Appreciate with money, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Just making sure. Um, so, so again, we, we keep using this term community. Um, you guys probably have a better idea of how big it actually is because you, you're one of the uh, uh, commerce vendors, retail vendors. And, and let me just say that um, if we look at or when I look at um, other systems that are similar to an Amiga, like an Atari or an Acorn or uh, those types of machines, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you know, but I don't see any kind of dealer infrastructure at all, like anything, let alone um, a few folks uh, who are actually not only uh, surviving, but also finding investment and growing and thriving to a certain extent with new hardware and so forth. So. Uh, I think that does make the Amiga particularly unique in, in, in the world today as something that is uncategorizable um, because it is so radically different from everything else. Um, but going back to the community uh, point, uh, how big do you think the community, and this is the panel, like where do you see those inflection or tipping points happening? And, and maybe there's other markets or industries with new technology that, that we could draw on as a uh, analog for what we might see in the future. <laughs> I imagine those numbers are probably proprietary at this point. No. Well, no, 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 not, well no, so, so the question is, is it, is it, there's two ways of approaching it. Is it 100% growth of what we have today before we see an inflection point? Uh, is it 10,000 people? I'm just saying, like, we could use abstract thoughts, but um. I, I, I was just thinking. It was an interesting question. Um, I don't know if this necessarily relates to a, a certain number of people. It certainly relates to a certain number of people to try to help drive the cost down. Can everybody hear me? Do we need to move this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, one of the neat things about this community, and, and I think it's really extraordinary. There are some uh, really neat things going on in the. Acorn community, uh, people who use Risk OS, but they're using sort of off-the-shelf solutions for this. I don't see anybody in the retro computing space or the non-traditional computing space doing this, where you're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars, well, a million dollars, in the development of custom bespoke hardware to run a particular platform. And I think that's, I think that's really amazing. You know, one of the interesting things about it is, is it's a chicken and egg thing. If you want to drive down the costs. Um, you need more users. If you need more, if you want more users, you have to drive down the cost to make it more accessible, and it's a it's a bit of a problem. And if, when you're when you're making um, uh, machines for a broader marketplace, what dominates the cost is primarily your bill of materials and your marketing uh, the dollars. It's certainly not your development dollars for the board. That that dwarfs uh, everything else because uh, the bill of materials may be say a thousand dollars. You may have spent well over a million dollars, well over a million dollars to develop that board. But because you're pushing out tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of units, the cost of development is amortized over those number of boards. It's a tiny fraction. Whereas here, it dominates the cost entirely. It's, it's I, I don't know because, uh, and I, I wouldn't ask because I know it's proprietary, but I would suspect that the cost of the development is amortized over the small units of, of, that are actually shipped out actually dominates the price more so than the components that go into the machine. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things. I'm actually a, a new user. Um, uh, the reason I joined the Amiga community in 2010 was I, I just found the experience joyous. I hadn't had a machine where I came home from work and wanted to use it, even if I didn't have a reason to. Since I was a kid, it was great to use. But it has to be more than that. 
And I think the strategy so far is really good. It's finding the holes and plugging them. For example, we don't really have a modern productivity suite. By leveraging existing code uh, and getting that out there, we will build up the user base because uh, that provides a key need for users who otherwise wouldn't migrate to the platform. You start plugging those things and you start gradually building up the user base. When you gradually build up the user base, you get more volume. More volume means the prices start to go down. Prices start to go down, more users. More users again, then you start getting more unique applications because now people can make money out of it. In a hobbyist community, right, you can only do things out of love for so long. At some point, you have to eat. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I look at Sketch, uh, Sketch uh, does anybody else use Sketchblock around here? Awesome tool, right? I mean, it's amazing, and that, that's, that's a work of love by Andy. But imagine how many sketch blocks there could be out there if there was an opportunity to sell that work for a reasonable amount of price. So I think the approach so far is really, really good. You get the hardware there, you get us to where we need. We support the latest and greatest hard, uh, graphics hardware, and the compute performance is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not comparable to a PC yet, but it, it's much better than it was, and it's certainly, given the, given the software that you're running on it, terrific. Uh, you start plugging those holes. You bring in the office productivity suite. You start bringing in uh, Lyle's music software by waking him up and getting him to code. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, really, I, really, I really think things are moving along in the right way, but it does require everybody to really get out there. So uh, if you've been sitting on the fence, wanting a machine, do it. These things are going to be way fast, way cool, and there's great software to do it, and more is coming. And when it gets there, don't sit there and say, well, this is wonderful. Go into the office and do demos at work. Do demos amongst your friends. Show them this. And I think you'd be surprised how many people might actually end up buying one of them. I have one question before you guys go off. What about the, uh, getting, all these, uh, getting all the third party uh, developers in, in gear? The ones that was on the Amiga uh, software site. You mean the older companies? Uh -huh. They don't exist anymore. No, get the guys who are still alive. It's, uh, Dormant. Well, I think that goes back to what we're talking about and sort of that the tipping software. point inflection. Like, when do we attract um, the older users? The the guys who were part of the pioneers, who are Correct. excellent coders and are able to you know build. But more importantly, there's also a new generation. And, and I look around the, younger, the room, younger generation, and the younger older. generation. And you know, I think on average. Might be a shock, but I think we're getting a little older. <laughs> we have a youngster here. Thanks for pulling the average down a little. <laughs> but in general, I mean, there's, there's, that's also part of that outreach. Is and and I think one of the challenges that Amiga has specifically in this case is that there is a wave that's happened, um, and it's continuing to grow momentum around um, an entirely new class of computing device. That that Raspberry Pi, the Arduino. Um, those type of systems, which are, uh, Raspberry is a little more general in theory, but it can also be applied specific, to specific use cases like the Arduino can for that physical computing need. Um, and I think those technologies are beginning to attract younger people back into the idea of compute. Um, I don't know if something like the Amiga will do that. That's true. Good. Um, yeah, uh, another interesting question is whether there could be another killer app that, that would give it a boost. Because, for example, the PC uh, took off in business because of Lotus 1, 2, 3. And the killer app for the Amiga was the toaster. Because uh, suddenly here is some, some, something that a lot of commercial outfits needed to do, and they could do it very economically with Amigas. So they all ran out and bought Amigas. And, and so if something else came along that were like that, that suddenly here is this machine that can do this great thing. So people who aren't necessarily computer enthusiasts, but just have some application they want to perform, and this happens to be the best tool to do it, then there's a whole new market. Um, I have to take issue with you on the party party. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't because it's a British machine. I should support Britain. Uh, it's a fantastic machine at a price you can't beat it. Um, it's kids, it hasn't been taken on by education. It's not being used by kids. They will never use it. They get their Xbox out. It's been used by middle-aged <laughs> developers all around the world to do wonderful things. And they've just built their millionth Raspberry Pi. And the, the head of the foundation, uh, Evan, what's his name, Evan, uh, he, he says that he's really pleased because he's just 
overtaken the number of BBC micros that were built because that was his machine as a kid. Um, but they're not obviously not making the profit on the Raspberry Pi uh, because uh, at thirty pounds or fifty five dollars, there's not a lot of return on that. But there's a lot of um, political stuff behind that, so you know, I, I really shouldn't say that. Uh, when uh, LD said that you should take your machine to the office and talk to your co-workers, he actually does that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he does take his machine, gives them demonstrations on it, on his Sam, come on, on his Sam, and they're amazed what could be done on a Sam, on a Sam 4 So uh, it, it does show you that, that, that uh, there's still something amazing about our system and our software. And I wasn't being down or on Amiga OS at all, I was just saying that we need to start to attract other people. Uh, we, we have had, with X1000 customers, people coming back to the, the Amiga who haven't been the Amiga for a number of years and been totally blown away by what's possible. But, but it's, we still are in the situation where we expect people to live with the little idiosyncrasies of Amiga OS. We do, because we understand it, we love it, we've been with it from way back, uh, but we need to get a bit, a bit more stable, a bit. Some of the tools, that, or some of the, I keep saying, but some of the, the uh, utilities that people expect to see on a modern computer, we don't have, or we don't have in an easy way. So, so to me, it's software. And, and I keep saying, with some of the other developments we've got coming through, uh, I don't think hardware is going to be a problem. And you know, I think we've got lots of opportunities going forward, and not just in the Amiga world, in, in other, in other, um, other communities. Can I just explain one more thing real quick? Actually, speaking of the demos, uh, I, I actually do, and, and and it's true. I think what most people are amazed at is that a little embedded processor that's literally architecturally about. 13 years old at best, um, is able to run all this cool stuff. And they're amazed at it, and they love it. Why don't they buy it? The reason why they don't buy it is because it's cool from a geek perspective. But that doesn't drive customers. In order to do so, you have to have a credible platform. Questions come in, well, what about a word processor? Well, we got the, the second you go, well, that's, that, that, that's no sale. So by bringing LibreOffice in, you plug a massive hole. By bringing in the modern hardware that has enough performance so that you can actually watch the videos people are watching today, that plugs a huge hole. And once you start to create a platform in which you have the ability to do the same types of things that you do with a normal PC, people will suddenly be interested in, in spending money on it. Even though it's more expensive because they can do what they want to do, but they also get the excitement of using something that's different. And for people who are particularly middle-aged and people who, you know, you get older, you get a little more money and so forth, and you, they start to think about things as they used to be back in the day, they get that retro computing experience, but they can actually use it like their PC. Once you hit that point, I think that's the point you start wanting to spend dollars on marketing to the outside community. Probably not before, but I think we're getting really close to it. I think one of the uh, the, the other challenges that we face in the community is, uh, I, I talk to a lot of developers, and um, some of them develop uh, programs that we use day in, day out and they don't get the proper recognition in terms of donations for their, for their uh, work. And that can be quite uh, demoralizing for developers because they're, they're putting in a lot of man hours for, this, for these applications and um, they're not seeing any feedback from the community in terms of just a simple email saying, you know, I use your program, I love it, and thanks very much, or a donation just to, to just to show recognition for their work, and if we, if we really value the the developers on the platform and the work that they do, and we want them to expand their, their applications and add new features, then um, we should uh, if if we haven't donated recently, we should look at uh, uh, ways to uh, to say thank you to the developers. So that that's one important way of uh, in engendering. The software Thanks, Matt. I'm going to be going to uh, purchase to uh, uh, directory office then from the PC side. Uh, thanks, Dan. Talking about Greg Perry and uh, Jonathan. Uh, for your, sorry, Potter. Potter. Jonathan Potter, thank you. Maybe uh, you should write a note thanking them for giving up the directory office 5 source. Yes, that should be good I also sent them three emails saying I use the uh, directory office 4 and 10. 
and how you feel on the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club. And soon to be using five because of work from a uh, dedicated Russian developer and, and many others actually I think contributing to, the, to that source tree um, and sort of resurrecting those those old titles oh, yeah. that uh, were one of the things. I mean, when I was a kid and I got a chance to use uh, Direction Opus 5 for the first time, I was blown away. Like, this is how it should be. It's so logical and simple. Um, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> you walked into a religious war, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just agreeing with you there. Don't worry about it. I, I see. Well, maybe, maybe it's there's simple choice. for some. There's a choice. There we go. <laughs> there's always choice. But in terms of capability, Direct Opus 10 is a lot easier to play with on the PC side, but it's also user provisioning for the Amiga side. Yeah, I just never liked apps where you couldn't move windows around. The whole point of windows is you can move them. Anyway, digressing here a little bit. Um, you, you brought up the uh, Raspberry Pi a second ago, and, and I don't know if people know the history of this device, but one of its principal designers and builders was a guy by the name of David uh, Braden, uh, Braden, who was the same guy who wrote Elite and Frontier and formed a company, and that, that company's first game was Frontier for the CD32, which was actually a disaster. Um, I had really high hopes for it. It really disappointed me. But uh, he was an Amiga developer, and he was a Commodore developer, but he did, he was a, an Amiga guy at the time, he did Amiga work, and now he went on to form this Raspberry Pi. So, um, you know, I think what we're saying is getting back to that, there's something about this thing that is different. The people that, that use it and, 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 and touch it, you know, uh, are, it's above average, I think, a lot in, in a lot of metrics for the, the user of the particular machine. But anyway, getting back to the discussion. Um, so, uh, th this is a good point that Kenny brought up around um, directory opus software. It's available on the PC. Um, just out of personal for the for the panel, what applications or categories do you guys remember from an Amiga perspective from the classic side or older applications? Would you'd love to see reborn? And it's a little tougher for LD because he doesn't have that history. But I was just wondering, uh, get some personal opinions there. <laughs> okay. The ones I really liked, we used all the time, H Plus, ProDraw, uh, AD Pro, um, like Final Writer, uh, D Opus, and I used Five on the German as well. I didn't use, I, I, I did upgrade. Word perfect? Uh, um, never used that. Um, <laughs> Big uh, No, I wasn't. <laughs> Professional page guy. Uh, uh, Deluxe paint. All the paint program. Personal paint. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really. I can answer. I can answer for Matthew. He was a games player. I use all the time, still on my classic, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's uh, TV paint, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've used you know, version 3.6. And I, I would absolutely love to see that on the next generation machine, so um, a, bit, a bit more uh, modernized for, for um, current applications, but uh, that's, that's one of my favorite applications. Al along with Wordsworth, uh, I don't know if anyone's used Wordsworth, but the, the last version was was one of my favorites, and, uh, and I am a page stream fan as well, so uh, I, hope, I hope that gets upgraded uh, uh, soon. But uh, I know that's still under development, isn't it? So, sort of, sort of, yeah. I'll, 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 uh, as far as applications, uh, it's pretty sad, actually. Uh, my favorite application was Lattice C. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yes. 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 It's kind of sassy. Yeah. Oh. I, I used to be very excited because my parents bought me upgrades at Christmas time for my C compiler. And I loved it. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
Uh, hey, that's own... what the kid wants. <laughs> <laughs> The only other application I really miss is uh, Maple, actually, which is morphed into MATLAB and is kind of so far. Um, love to have that back on the Amiga, some kind of mathematics, high-level mathematics. I love that too. <laughs> oh, I got a helper here for me. We'll chat. <laughs> I could. I was looking at uh, all the clones nowadays, Octave and SciTech. There, there's some alternatives that I'm really curious about. Anyway, that's, that's what I'm interested in. Uh, I, to carry on that, and, um, I used to work at Slack, the Linear Accelerator Center for Stanford, which was at, in the day uh, actually a, a, an Amiga developer site. And Maple, uh, there's an FTP site up there I'll have to find, which you might even get Maple off of it, I'm not sure. Um, very possible, but there's an active FTP. If you, if you um, Google Slack, uh, Amiga FTP, you'll probably find the site. Um, so, yeah, that, but, yeah, C compilers, I love my C compiler. No personal tank, because um, <laughs> I do actually use that, or do, and do use that occasionally. So, um, and perfect sound. And, uh, but, um, Maple and, uh, and a lot of other scientific applications, that kind of thing. So, I would love to see that kind of stuff happening as well, since that's basically what I do. A lot of the visualization, that kind of stuff, um, it's hard to do with basic. You know, Yeah, let's see, one of the ones I used to use quite a bit is bars and pipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another one which is probably even weirder than C compiler that I miss is VLT, the, the terminal emulator. I have yet to find anything as good as that that runs on the Mac. <laughs> I actually do not I actually used to do a lot of my own coding for MIDI stuff, so I actually coded on the Amiga a MIDI sequencer in Fortran. So. <laughs> Do you still, is the source code still available? Uh, I can probably find it. <laughs> so the uh, Stanford FTP site has VLT, mm -hmm. but it does not have Maple. It has okay. a, uh, what is this called, a uh, AREX Maple Interface LZH okay. from uh, 1992. Okay, sorry, sorry, Steve. Well, sorry, first of all, it's okay. We may still be able to work on that. There's modern engines now. Yeah. I noticed nobody mentioned anything along the lines of um, modeling <coughs> software. Uh, 3D uh, or like video in the, that world? Or? No, I was thinking more of modeling printed circuit boards uh, and, and the like. There's no CAD. There's no, not architectural no. CAD. Uh, no CAD. We did have a limited. Cat thing years ago, but yeah, uh, <laughs> but nothing like what's available on the main no, mainstream no. Uh, platforms these days. Well, this, like I mean, Eagle Cat is like the king of the downloadable free ones, right? From what I understand, but um, there were a few back in the day. Yeah, the cats all yeah. but I don't I don't think this particular group, maybe Fred does, but I I don't know if you guys do cat work or. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting mention, and um, I'm just surprised that nobody mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, I did find it funny that Trevor was talking about paint programs and how he tried them all and used them all because when you look at his, his blog, if you haven't seen his blog, go read his blog. Um, he does put a lot of attention to detail in the imagery. Um, if, if you checked his blog out for coming to Emmy West, there's the first graphic is um, four pages. There are four press releases. Those are the actual press releases. He just shrunk down to a thumbnail. You can actually tell what they were, but he, uh, I, can, I can see that in you playing with the paint program. Yeah. And Steve, I can see you playing with C compilers. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. Um, I, I really like to see an Artifact 5. Yeah. I really, 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 really would. I'd pay an awful lot of money for it. So right. if, if, if Simon is listening to this from in, in Germany, uh, <clears throat> you've got one customer, but. <laughs> oh, hopefully more than one. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I forgot to uh, to mention a visitor that we have with us, uh, Michael Batalana from Coanto. Uh, thank you for coming to Emmy West. <laughs> kind of thing, what role do you guys think emulation would play in increasing that customer base? 
And Michael could probably help us talk about uh, it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, um, it's a, I, I would suggest just really briefly that emulating any of the systems that currently run um, the current release version of the MIGOS is going to be several orders of magnitude more difficult than emulating um, a 68K based machine. Admittedly, of course, the classic Amiga, you had to uh, emulate the, uh, the classic graphics chips and a bunch of other things. That's really tricky as well, but uh, I don't think it would be simple. It'd be great if it was, because then if you, if you had that, you could make it a cloud service and people could go and act, seriously, you could try it out through a web browser or something, and, and, and that would be great, but uh, you'd need an awful lot of development dollars to do that. You know, people have to eat, and it's a lot of work. I just don't know that our community has those kind of resources available to it. Plus, I kind of like the cool boards. <laughs> Amy's store should, should provide that sort of service. Mm -hmm. But rent the use of a high power uh, productivity program while the, while, while the guys are online. Well, you mean demo software? You're talking about like a VNC no. session where you're driving a machine remotely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that the uh, client is actually using the software. On an Amiga. Renting it from Amy's store. <coughs> what does it work? Yeah. 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 We've actually considered that. Mm. And we have had discussions on it last year. Uh, it's not something that Hyperion want to do, or are interested in the moment. Uh, but we've mooted that as a possibility. Yeah. Uh, right. But uh, but, uh, but the, the argument is the argument that LD gave there is people want their hardware in their hand. Yeah. You know, Amiga OS. Amiga is not just the whole software; it's the package. Yeah. And and so you got this remote Amiga and in the cloud somewhere, which you can log into on any machine. You know, it could be a laptop, could be a, net, a netbook, could be a, a, a tablet, a PC, and have your Amiga in the cloud and you know, your Amiga fix through the web browser. Um, but it's not something that's uh, it's, it's not really what they want to do at the moment. Or you would have extensive use of that. It'd be great as, as, as for a demo purpose, but if you were to... If you it would be for a mobile Amiga. It would, but I, I just fear that if you were to do that, you would uh, completely crush uh, everyone who's invested in the ecosystem as it exists so far. And um, while I think you would probably get quite a few users doing that, you would kill all the people that have invested blood and sweat and tears and money. And that is not what you want to do, because you'll end up killing off your existing ecosystem. So unless you're going to grow up real fast, it's, it's, I don't, I'm not sure that's such a, such a it, at least not as a, as a demo, yes. As, as a replacement, no. <clears throat> well, I mean, that, that goes back to trying to understand. Um, and and it's, it's tougher now for the argument, because the hardware is commodity. But how much of the experience is hardware? How much of the experience is software? And that's definitely a religious battle. It is. <laughs> <laughs> on the Amiga side. So I don't want to have that. I'm just saying that when you go to the cloud model, you know, what do you give up, I think is also what Ellie was trying to say, uh, to get into that, that space. And uh, is it really something interesting and unique? Now, being able to not have to carry machines, the, the distance that we do to bring them to the show might be a little more convenient. We might have more here. Um, but it'd also be nice to have more here because we have more form factors, like things that have screens <laughs> with hinges and batteries would be phenomenal. Well, you can run the emulator on your phone, that works, but it's not the same thing. No offense, Michael. I'm sure you can do a lot of business on the UAE, but it's just not the same thing. No. I, I guess my point in the emulation. Uh, thought was to just introduce people to the Amiga itself in its classic form. And then, uh, you know, even through other users, you know, you're talking about doing demos for people. Right. Uh, and, you know, just using that as a first step, not as a last step. Uh, and I don't know whether it would make any sense or not, uh, but I, I don't, and I know for people who are, you know, I, I think it, it might have a potential for feeding into hardware and software markets. Uh, just to introduce people to you know how it looks, how it feels, and what it does. Well, so so I think it's an interesting point, and, and I think you know LD came to us uh, from outside the community, uh, someone who's interested, and in, I don't know how you found it, which is kind of cool. OS News. So OS News, okay. Um, 
uh, but what I'm, what I'm thinking is that if someone walked in the room and said, I've heard of the Amiga before, and I'm interested, can I have one to take home? I'm sure there'd be like three offers, like which one eats, which one eats here <laughs> to you like take home with you? Because we have, we have a plethora of classic hardware, but what, what we don't have is that next generation experience. And I think the two experiences are very, very different. And, well, and um, I think that's a challenge. I think it's a challenge. Uh, getting to the emulation software, I mean, uh, I think it's forever a superb product. And, uh, I, I know it's superb because I've helped back it, so. <laughs> so, so while I was joking about personal pain, I did use personal pain. Um, uh, but uh, Amiga Forever is superb, and I do push a lot of my uh, non-Amiga friends to try it out um, because it's uh, it's an excellent package. And I really like, I mean, I don't know whether my my suggestions or not, but I like the fact that um, with Amiga Forever you can choose your system and just get your, your previous classic system you like, there it is on your PC, so it's excellent. Um, but I think it makes it easy for people not to, to <laughs> become Amigans because they don't have to, you know, they can get their Amiga experience uh, on, a, it, uh, on a PC. It is not the experience. That's the problem. Well, get an Amiga, you know, if they got, they're thinking back to what they played, you know, the games they played as the youngsters, or the software they used, they can do it on their PC without any other commitment other than buying me forever. But they can't make a new partition on that hard drive and stuff junk in it. If you know what I'm saying. You can try. I'd like to. So, so, oh, okay, go ahead, Ollie. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump in, because okay. one of the frustrations... Well, actually, you really should, that's why you're up front. <laughs> <laughs> Please <don't. laughs> yeah, Right, so um, one of the very frustrating things for me as a new user was um, just figuring out what this thing looked like, felt like, because in order for me to try it, I had to buy a machine for several hundred dollars, because there wasn't enough users in the U.S. You know, one of the things I really wanted were screenshots and videos. You know, this kind of stuff that, you know, you have basic marketing for. And this has gotten a lot better, by the way, over the past few years. You know, in 2010, there was no wiki. There was no blog. There was no website for any of this stuff. It was almost like uh, <clears throat> people were hiding it, thanks to the, uh, the, the efforts of a certain Canadian and, and his minions. Uh, that, that situation has changed a lot, and it's gotten better. But if you want to attract new people, I don't think you're, in, other than uh, letting people rent sands, uh, which, you know, I mean, it could be done, but you're going to lose a lot of money in the process because things are going to get damaged, um, or coming up with an opportunity to demo it via a cloud service or, or, or RDP or VNC. One of the great ways that you could really help people get a flavor is just to have some people who spend their time making YouTube videos of high quality. Uh, uh, galleries of screenshots to walk you through. If you go to haiku-os.com uh, or the haiku site, you know, one of the things that one of the uh, enthusiasts did was they sat down and they created a video and they walked you through all sorts of stuff. The system, applications that run on the system, what it feels like. There's uh, walkthroughs of the operating system and that's something that really will help people who are on the fence. Little marketing things like that, I think, and that's not something necessarily that has to cost much. And each and every one of you who are here or, or listening at, at home or wherever else you're receiving the stream, hopefully it's dignified, um, can can you know right now go home, make a video, cut, take a couple of screenshots, post it on Facebook, post it on Google Plus. It helps. Okay. And so, how many people have an opportunity who don't belong to a user group? You can start a user group with the equipment that you've got and talking to your friends like you do, LD. It requires Amigas. Well, it does. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, me. I'm a user group of one. Right. Yeah, yeah me too. Amiga yeah. User, uh, there is an Amiga user group in Waterbury, Connecticut, and any time you can swing by, we've got meetings 24-7. <laughs> but in order to have a group more than, I need Amigas, and that, it's, it's hard to find them. I know, I know, I know. And you see, that's, the, that, that's what happened you know, early on, is that not only was there a lot of product to buy, and was there a, you know, a, a plethora of a, a, a tremendous interest in the machine, but you know, people were becoming Amigas. And you know, I think that's one of the things that all of us can 
try to do wherever we are, uh, is to take what we use, how we use it, and what we do, and talk to somebody about it, anybody. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, but one of the things we did for the Merced group is that we had a small drop-off of people because we were moving from 64 to the Amiga group. We actually hosted a, you know, discovered the Amiga at a mall. We actually had it in front of the thing, and we had people come through, look at the things going on, and they're like, that did that TV show? That, yeah, and people were, we actually probably got like two or 300 people from that one showing to come in and learn about it, and out of that, I think about 60, 70 of them stayed in constantly all the way until the air base closed. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was closed. But, but when did you do that? When, when that was, was probably between, that was 19, yeah, 89, so that was 89 there, through 90, through 90, through 97. Kind of right, but we ran it from 97, but we still had a constant amount of people until. But we're not there. It was a lot easier to do. Yeah, but you can now. still do that now. So, yeah. so, so how many of the people in this room bought their Amiga back in the classic days for me, or maybe not for you, um, because of a marketing campaign commercial that they saw, versus how many people bought their Amiga because they knew somebody that had one that showed it to them yeah. and said, I got this cool thing and you should see it. Okay? So this isn't a new problem. This has been a problem since 1984. <laughs> you know? A product that can sell itself. Yeah. Well, and so so the whether it's through a users group community or whether it's through a one-on-one, -on -one, you show your buddy, that's the way to get people involved in this machine. If there's ever a point where there's a critical mass enough to have a marketing and sales and all that kind of push, fine. But we're not going to see that until we've gotten our next door neighbor, our buddy down the hall at work or whatever, to, to see what this machine, see what this concept, see what this operating system looks like, what it does, and how it works. So I think we're actually we're actually closer. I, 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 I use a litmus test internally, like, do I really want my mom to use this? <laughs> like, if my mom yeah. were using an Amiga, what would that experience be like for me? <laughs> we're not there yet. But we're also significantly closer than we were five years, even probably three years. Yeah. And that that sort of two-year timeline, assuming the, the and, and I'll, I'll beat up on OS4, and, and maybe MorphOS might be in a different place, but I'm not as familiar with it. Um, the, the, the beavers who are, are making OS4, if they get a little busier and can get those foundational pieces done that we know about, SMP, Gallium, and so forth, um, I can see with a competent office suite that runs fast and a competent browser that has a full hardware accelerated HTML5 Canvas engine, all of that kind of good stuff, actually going there. But right now, it's a little too jagged for the... Um, uninitiated or people who aren't technology people who are yeah, just absolutely looking for something that is really different and unique in technology. I come home and I turn my media on and I look at it and say, I gotta think of something to do with this. And I enjoy that. It's really weird because I don't know that I'm back. Yeah, I'm I, I can else. tell you this right now. I was a sixty four user until my mom bought me a, uh, an Amiga for Christmas in and nineteen eighty five. And until nineteen eighty six I joined the club. This one. And I had the 500 ever since until 1997, 99, somewhere there. Because I was getting ready, due to my mom, I was going to be living in Hawaii. So I couldn't transport it and me over there because on aircraft, they wait. So I had to give it up. I, and I gave it to the club so they could use it in some manner. But I still want an Amiga. I still want one. You, you get one. I think they're on the other side of the world. They don't want <laughs> anyone. But the, uh, so we're, we're coming up on time. Um, uh, any closing statements by the uh, folks of the panel? Any, any closing statements? Or actually, hold on one second. Any questions from the audience? Um, Alex, did you have a question? It's not a question, but like since Commodore sold millions of Amiga, it's reasonable to say there's millions of ex Amigas, and the problem is most of them don't even know that What's going Amiga on? is still alive, and there's no mention of Amiga in the mainstream press at all. 
Conspiracy. So no. <laughs> I think, uh, no public service announcements. That's the, so no. the biggest problem is that uh, there's millions of people who would be interested if only they knew that the Amiga is still around. And yeah. Because they don't even know it's alive, they don't even think of like searching Google for Amiga or anything. And he's right, 100%. Maybe we could get Andy Warhol to do another event. <laughs> 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 With Debbie Hare. That would be a very interesting trick on more than one level. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the audience for new closing statements? Yes, Robert. I was at Maker Faire this year. We had a nostalgic computers exhibit there at Maker Faire. I had a C64, C128, and an Amiga 2000 there. Hundreds of people came through our exhibit. You know, there were 100,000 people at Maker Faire right there in San Mateo. Hundreds of people kept marching right through our exhibit. I mean, 11 hours a day. I was there at those tables. Well, all the other makers went way on break. I was there 11 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday, you know, showing this is what, what you do on the C64 or 128. This is what you do on the Amiga 2000. And there was so much interest there. I said, wow, this could be like an advertisement for Amiga if we just had... If I had thought of bringing brochures or handouts or flyers about, I was, telling, I, I was telling people about the Amy Wish Show, about Convex. I mean, they wanted to know. And of course, some of them were said, said oh, we're, we programmed it back in the day. I said, well, you can still get back into it. I said, oh, we used this back in the day. Well, we'll get back into it. We have this in our closet. I said, get it out. We can support you. No, that's an excellent example of, of uh, what, what George was saying earlier, and, and what Ellie was saying too, is, is getting out there and spreading the word. And if you try a hundred or a thousand times, maybe you'll find someone interested. <laughs> no, but it, it's true. I mean, I think there's a lot of people who are, uh, in, in my professional life, um, I try to sort of drop the Amiga name when I'm in meetings <laughs> with customers and whatnot. It's every now and then it's someone's like, you. that's kind of cool. Um, I, I, I had business with a company whose CEO was one of the developers, Commodore Unix, and I had a 3000 UX on my desk at work, and unfortunately never came by. I was like, I was going to like, oh, anyway. Um, so, uh, any other questions from the audience? Or Okay, so let's do closing statements, and let's wrap up and go party. <laughs> so, um, how do I do this? Let's start with, with Fred and go that way, and then I'll... And, I, don't, I don't think I agree with him. Okay. No problem. I mean, I said before that we need applications that take it a little bit further. <coughs> yes. Closing statements. Um, I, I was just thinking. Uh, my uh, my wish would be that more people would. Uh, Thank their developer today. <laughs> if, if somebody made a piece of software that you use, send them an email. Um, like for example, uh, I made this uh, program called Ranger because it helped me out with development. And then I find out that there's a lot of downloads of it. I had one person ever give me a donation, even though I asked for donations in the README, ever. And it was, it's been five, six years. I'm not losing track now. <laughs> so I'm like, tell them it exists, <laughs> that you exist, right? That, that, that's, that's it. You don't have to give them any money. Just tell them you exist. That's about it. That's about it. You know, uh, obviously, I think in the future I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't meant to be down anyone. I think it's great. It's a great time. We think uh, three or four years ago, actually, before AQ you know, started building the SAM systems, it looked like we were down there. So uh, I do think a thank AQ an awful lot for keeping the, the dream alive uh, and getting me involved, because that's how I got involved in the first place. Um, so I'm actually, and Michael as well, because it was a visit with Michael that uh, led to uh, me getting involved in, uh, eventually, in the X1000. So, small, actually, the media world's very small, <laughs> and anywhere you go, there's, there's someone who, who was or is in the media. Uh, actually, I, Matthew's got a story, because he was at a, uh, a retro, actually, retro, past, present, and future media show, uh, sorry, uh, show, computer show in Manchester, in the northwest of England, 
last week, Paul Lally, that's why he's tired of these people. <laughs> And uh, there were 60,000 people at the show over two days. So, uh, having said that, I'm going to pass it to Matthew and he can give you what he learned from the show. Yeah, so uh, last, last weekend, uh, just before I jumped on the plane to come here, um, we attended a, um, a computer show in Manchester. A very significant amount of people were there, thousands and thousands went past our stand. We had a nice AU on the stand. We had a, a white X1000, a black X1000, running the workbenches, the games, uh, you know. It, uh, we were really showcasing our stuff to the wider community, uh, the wider uh, computing community. Uh, and a lot of these people were um, ex-Amigans and they hadn't seen an Amigan for many, many, many years, you know, 20 odd years. So, so they were very surprised um, to, to see uh, the, the Amigas there. I had lots of comments throughout the weekend. Is this a PC? I had to say, no, it's not a PC. <laughs> one guy said, one guy said uh, uh, when he saw the white X1000, is this a bridge? So, uh, I was baffled by that comment. <laughs> Quite a few um, uh, uh, celebrities, Jeff Minter was there, um, uh, Rob Helpert was there. Which, uh, so they, they went past our stand, uh, very, very baffled by, <laughs> by the next generation of Amigas. Um, but it, it, it did highlight to me that there were three Commodore developers, ex-Commodore developers, that came up to me. And when they saw the Amiga, they, they started asking questions, is this the new operating system? I said yes. And they said, why? <laughs> and then they said, uh, is this the new hardware, explained all about the Nemo boards, and they just replied, why? <laughs> and, you know, I, I, they said, um, is there, is there, what's the community like? I explained that, you know, there's still hardcore people still involved in the Amiga community. And they said, why? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that was the response I had from them. But, but... At least they went away knowing that the media's still here, there's new hardware still made, the operating system's still being uh, developed by many, many people in this room, and uh, a lot of people put blood, sweat, and tears into it. And I knew that I wanted to be involved in it the rest of my life. I ran Commodores and I ran Macs, and uh, I just loved using them, and it, was, it meant so much to me. But at some point I grew up. The mm -hmm. Mac went away, the Ataris went away, Commodore went away. And I, for years and years and years, just didn't have something where I came home and wanted to use the machine because I enjoyed using it because it was fun. I didn't think that was ever <coughs> going to happen again until I found this. And the very fact that people have struggled on time and again, lawyers and all sorts of other struggles and financial problems and all the rest of it, I can't tell you what it means to me to be able to have that hobby again. And I suspect there's probably quite a few people just like me. So. Thank you all very much. If we're quiet, I apologize. We need to say thank you more often. Um, it's just been wonderful, and uh, this is a great platform, and I'm so pleased to see it continue. Thank you to our panel for participating. We uh, appreciate your perspectives, and uh, I think that we can take encouragement from you know, being able to uh, talk with and uh, hear from uh, the movers and the shakers in the, in the Amiga community who are assembled here in this room uh, to be able to know that our, our future is proceeding and we do have uh, people who believe in uh, not only a computer platform but in the people who use it. And uh, you know, I, that's one of the things that I always say about our show. You know, we provide the place, but you come. If you didn't come, there wouldn't be a show. Uh, and uh, so it's all, uh, our, again, our thanks to you who have come, some from great distances, uh, from, you know, across oceans and through the air, uh, on, the, on the ways, on the rail, uh, you know, however you got here. Uh, and because you, you make this show. Uh, and uh, if we, you know, if you didn't come, we, we couldn't have it. Uh, you know, we have a user group meeting every month. I mean, it would just be a big user group meeting. But now you have added to it. You have made that into capital. You have made that into creativity. And uh, that's why we're here. 
Uh, so, um, and we'll do it again next year. Uh, we've never canceled the show. Uh, we've been at it. This is the 16th year. Uh, and uh, so, um, we Have really, you booked the hotel? Really, pardon me? Have you booked the hotel? <laughs> well, we, we, they only take it a year in advance. So we have to win when we're done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we will. I, and uh, I'll make sure. So uh, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, Amiga team members, don't Give forget um, um, oh. against the back wall from the firing squad. <laughs> uh, so uh, show floor opens again 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And uh, do we have a, another, another message from Bill here? Uh, I think Paul was just pointing out that the uh, developer award hadn't been said who won. Oh, yeah. that's right. Who <laughs> did win? Who won? Paul did. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that, that people did actually vote for him, which was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I got my vote in. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and for the official record, he's a qualified developer. He has software up on yes. OS4 Depot. Yes. It is available and it was released in the last year. So it doesn't hurt that he's also the second name I typed in when I was building a database or whatever. How many um, votes did you get? Uh, none, actually. I, I was the first name nominated when I was building a database, but I decided I wasn't going to nominate myself fast. That no one nominated me, so it's okay. I only have seven, 73 downloads on my screen blanker. And, uh, but anyway. Um, so the winner was, after uh, the voting here at the, the show, and we will uh, produce and send to this individual a, uh, a plaque. Um, but the, the winner, uh, and I should say of the top five, they were all excellent developers, really appreciate their work. Um, we'll, we'll call it, uh, uh, what is it, first among equals, shall we call it, uh, was Simon Archer. Uh, one one of the Thank you very much. Time for the party.